Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Take Two Podcast, episode 254. And this week is going to be a little Han Solo action, a solo show featuring just me, Brian. Sorry, new listeners, if you normally uh, listen to our show, you know that we have Tony and myself, Brian. We are co-hosting here Take Two Podcast. We give you a weekly show that does TV, movie, reviews, news, and our Take Two. Today, Tony's on vacay. He's out having a grand old time with the family, and he's gone for the week. I promise he'll be back next week, but for this week, I'm sorry, you're just going to get me. Uh, He did the exact same thing a couple weeks ago, and he surprised you with a couple of guest hosts. No guest host surprises. Sorry, folks. Just going to be the B-man this week for you, but... We do have some good things for you in episode 254. We have five different reviews. I have two movies we're going to chat about a little bit later, two season recaps we're going to talk about, and a first take. So we're checking off all of our boxes for the most part, film, streaming, TV, you name it. We're going to chit-chat about that. But here's my surprise. The hottest topic all of last week on television and even on your social media for uh, Hollywood type stuff was The Field of Dreams. You guys know how big of a fan I am of this film. I fanboyed out hardcore professionalism out the window when I got to interview Mr. Dwyer Brown. You recognize that name. I know you do it. It's because he's a fantastic actor and he was the main part of Field of Dreams at the very end. He played John Kinsella. He plays the dad who comes in out of the corner at the end, and then that's what the entire movie is about. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen Field of Dreams. Whoops, sorry. Anywho, I got to talk to him not only about his career, his book, his charity, but also the event last week doing the Field of Dreams game. Uh, it's fantastic. This What you're going to get later on on the show after our first break, you're going to get snippets of the interview, not the entire thing, because we were supposed to do like five to ten minutes, and we wound up talking for like 27. Phenomenal guy. Love talking movies and filmmaking, and then love talking baseball too. So... If you want the full thing, go to our YouTube page right this very second. We have that posted. Don't do it right now, but like when you're done listening to the podcast, then go to the YouTube page. Subscribe because we put up all of our shows. We put up our interviews, and this said interview in its entirety is on our YouTube page right now, and you can watch all of that. Uh, There is a moment at the end of this interview. You'll hear it here, and you'll see it on the interview where he gets me, man. Definitely some tearing up because I throw a line at him. I roll the dice. I'm like, I'm going to throw an actor's line at him. And he throws it right back at me. I was done. Ball my eyes out. I had to hit stop on the recording so nobody could see it. But if you guys want to know what I'm talking about, you're going to hear a little bit later in the show. Thank you very much for listening. And then go to our YouTube as well. Other places you can follow our show, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Please follow all of those at Take Two Pockets. We're very easy to find across the board for the socials. If you want, leave that five-star rating and review that helps our show out big time almost as much as helping out with patreon we have a patreon what does that do bonus content you get at least two podcasts per month from tony and myself maybe even some more folks jump on there you get some merchandise you get some shout outs oh shout out you say well here you go chris katz ryan kevin vaughn g banger gerald Roy and Craig. Not sure why I hit puberty when I said Gerald's name there, but all those are our patrons right now, and they are phenomenal folks. And it's as low as a dollar a month. That's it. There's different four. There's different four. Four different tier levels that you can join there, all the way up to fifteen bucks. Vaughn himself. That's why we say his name so strongly. Is because he's God Squad level. He created it. What you can do with that is you get the bonus content, but then you can make us do things, i.e., review a movie, review a TV show. You yourself come on the show like Chris got to do, Shy got to do. These folks have come on to our show because they're patrons and loyal supporters, and we want you to do the same. It's a dollar a month. That's it. Patreon.com. Take two podcasts. All right, folks. Today we have our poll results. That's humorous, interesting. We'll talk about that in a minute. We have the box office, lots of casting news, lots of regular Hollywood news, some DC, a bunch of Marvel today, uh, some award season-y stuff, and more also, in your Take Two podcast feed, currently, Woody Harrelson Spotlight just dropped. Guys, you got, listen to this one. I looked at the numbers, and not a lot of people have checked it out yet, but, I, but you should because, A, he led an interesting life, i.e. his dad is an assassin. Spoiler alert. Go listen to that. We talk more and more about that. Uh, but, B, he's one of those actors that's like, is he a leading man? Is he just a character actor? Is he a tweener, uh, to use a sports term? He does it all. And it's hard to put a label on the guy, but one thing we do know is that he's a fantastic actor, a great performer. And go check out our spotlight. It's on Woody Harrelson right now. But for episode 244, I'm just going to try and not ramble as much as I can here. Thank you very much for subscribing. I can't wait to see your responses across all of our socials on this episode and more. So let's get things started with our box office. 
fun behind the scenes curtainy stuff here for you guys is um like in between like when i'll pull up some notes section and then tony gets to talk and then vice versa like we get that little gap in there but like you guys watching on youtube you're gonna get to see like a little hiccup a little in between and us reading notes or me at least reading notes so a little inside baseball for you youtube watchers specifically today uh, uh the audio folks you're just gonna get the edited version sorry this is how you subscribe to youtube if you want to see behind the scenes all right here we go taking a swig speaking of taking a swig a little later on we will have our what's in the glass segment okay box office oh baby free guy what 18.8 million dollars comes in strong and is now up to 58 million dollars domestically this is insane 4100 theaters it wins the weekend folks this is the largest week two smallest drop off from weeks one to two that we've had post pandemic Oof, i like saying that phrase post pandemic but that's also kind of like has an asterisk next to it but that's huge that is huge for this movie i'm going to talk about this movie in just a moment it is going to be one of our reviews it's great to see a movie like this making this much money uh it's great to see this movie sustaining because this is an original ip and we're going to talk about that again in a minute so i won't wax too much on it right now but to see it have the staying power granted what was it up against we'll talk about that in half a second the fact that it pulls in another 18.8 million dollars is fantastic uh it's per average theater 4500 that won the weekend obviously i mean it made 18 million on its own so that wins the weekend number two paw patrol movie i actually contributed to this no there will not be a review of paw patrol today sorry um no regret stuff today i uh, went there with the kids 13 million dollars even obviously 13 million total overall because it's weekend one for them that's kind of a good movie uh that's a good movie that's some good money for a film that is kid friendly family friendly right now my thought was final weekend before school is back so everyone's like Woo let's get out there we had some rain across the east coast i know like friday saturday ish it got packed in some theaters across the board my theater is a little more crowded than i liked uh, we, we lucked out with some seats like to the side where we got to uh, stay to the side what have you um so i think that's what really helps this movie a lot of families were like all right done with the summer school's next one last hurrah 13 million bucks number three jungle cruise in his third week of release comes in at 6.2 million dollars puts it up to 92 overall don't breathe part two comes in, in fourth place with five million dollars that's now at 19 after two weeks respect uh, is not being respected. Three point eight million dollars does come in fifth place here. Fifteen million overall. I still want to see this film. I know my daughter actually wants to see this film. So, at some point, we will check out Respect. I have a feeling that there might be some Oscar acting nominations coming later out of this, so we might have to watch it regardless. But I wanted to watch it either way. Suicide Squad coming in sixth place. Three point four million dollars up to forty nine overall. Seven, eight, nine. All first week releases. The Protege, Nighthouse, Reminiscence. Protege, 2.9 million bucks. Nighthouse right behind it at 2.8 million. And then Reminiscence at 2 million. Now, not all of these were exclusive to the theaters, i.e. Reminiscence. We're going to review that in just a minute. Could have watched it on HBO Max. I did. I didn't pay money for it. It shows. It only made 2 million bucks. My review later on might also show why it only made $2 million. Spoiler. 10th place. Seventh week of release. Hanging on strong. Black Widow black widow baby 1.1 million dollars it's up to 180 total there oh not too bad hang on there black widow keep marvel alive they need the money so the the crux of the box office here is that free guy hangs on the smallest drop off from a week one to a week two the biggest week two winner post pandemic uh however you want to say that sentence 58 million bucks and i feel like this movie is going to go strong word of mouth is going to play quite well into all this and it deserves it so all right here we go from the box office we're going to go to our poll results every single thursday the poll gets dropped and it's across all of our socials twitter instagram facebook and you guys can drop uh, drop you can vote and comment and give us your thoughts on the poll and that is what happened this week um tony funny guy thought he'd be funny uh what he did though is a made fun of me but B, I felt the love. It was my birthday this weekend. I turned 40 years old yesterday as I'm recording back on Sunday, August 22nd. And uh, Tony put the poll up of the actors. It was a happy birthday to me is, is the crux of the poll. And then of these four actors, the whom are bald, which one 
looks the most like me or which one do I look the most like? And it was Patrick Stewart, Jason Statham, Stanley Tucci, or J.K. Simmons. Now, number one, the photo of J.K. that Tony included in the poll. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> He's jacked. He's, you know, you can see the muscles bulging. Uh, thank you very much for using that uh, specific photo of J.K. I appreciate it. So this poll, first of all, it was a tie on Twitter. Only 32 votes, which I don't blame people for not wanting to vote on this poll. And also, all of our 1,800 followers on uh, on on Twitter don't know what I look like, so that's okay. That's fine. That means you guys obviously don't subscribe to the YouTube. You should need to immediately. But uh, but so that there was a little a little swaying there. Uh, but only 32 votes. Stewart and Statham tie at 31 percent. Tucci and J.K. tied at 19 percent each. So we're we're a tie across the board. Now Frankie from Frankie underscore says with the Z at the end there. Thanks, buddy. He throws out a little Michael Chiklis. Not only does he throw out Michael Chiklis as a comment, he also uh, does a little uh, split screen picture of Chiklis and then myself in the shower. Yes, I said that sentence. It's a picture of me in the shower. Uh, we posted a while back when I was at the beach and I was doing a little bourbon in the shower action. Uh, but this means that Frankie had to have either scrolled back to screenshot said photo of me in the sh in the outdoor shower when I was at the beach, or he saved that photo from back then of me in said shower. Um, either way, Frankie, thank you. I appreciate it. And anyone that wants to save pictures of me in the shower, God bless you. I mean, my wife doesn't. You guys are welcome to them. Have at it. Um, uh, for Patreon, one dollar a month, we can get you more of those. <laughs> Woo, let's move along. Okay, so here's where this gets fun. Instagram, we got some comments. MDX Pop, we've heard from you guys a lot. Thank you very much for listening and commenting. They threw in J.K. Simmons, uh, Craig, one of our Patreon members, and good good buddies, throws in J.K. Simmons. But he also said, "I agree with the Chicklist thought." Interesting that Craig said that on his Instagram when it was a comment on Twitter. That means Craig, you follow all of our socials. Thanks, pal. We already knew that, but he echoed the Chicklist. Uh, Katz, one of our good pals, went with Tucci. Thank you very much. Bart, frequent commenter, said The Rock. Take your lips off of my butt now, Bart. Thanks, buddy. Uh, my skin's not that tan. That's why. But then he said, I actually honestly do see Chickless, but it's the Shields level Chickless. I'd love the chickless love. I really do. And I can see it, but he's, you know, he's a huskier guy. So I, I'm not sure how to, how to take that. Uh, but either way, I will take it uh, over on Facebook. Welcome. Welcome to the poll. Facebook commenters. Where have you guys been? You never comment on the poll ever. Tony, you found a way to draw these people out. I'm so proud of you. I, I, I'm rambling here. We got to move the show along here. All right. Ed Fatula, a, a new commenter. First, he put up a picture of Dan Aykroyd and Coneheads. Not bad. I'm looking at my bald head right now. I don't think it's that pointy, but then he did follow it up with a Billy Zane. I'll take the Billy Zane for sure. Troy Ziegler, uh, he throws in J.K. Simmons. Frank, who never eh, sometimes comments, uh, throws in Stanley Tucci. Now, Frank D is going to be a podcaster himself soon. So we might hear from Frank coming up soon. He's a big bicyclist. And folks, if you're out there and you're into bicycling, let us know on the side. Frank is starting a bicycling podcast, and uh, we might throw you his way. Uh, Bo, former co-host of ours and good pal of ours, throws out Dr. Evil. Right. Thank you very much, Bo. Uh, Eric from the Break Fix Break Fix Pod. Uh, he's been on our show, and I've gotten to be on his show. Throws out Bruce Willis. I appreciate that very much. Rudy, first-time commenter. Rudy, big New York Giant fan, too. Throws out Jason Statham, and he says that I could be the next transporter. Why not? Uh, and then Ryan, weirdly enough, looks a lot like Troy Ziegler. Either way, he goes with Patrick Stewart. So if you guys do the math of all of those names that I just threw out there, of which bald which actor I look the most like or looks the most like me, I think obviously the obvious answer is Chris Evans. Okay, moving along. Thank you, Tony. Shout out to my co-host, Tony. Um, he likes to pretend to be an arsehole and he like holds that. Like, I'm a jerk, so I get to talk mean to each other uh, moniker, but people who know him on the side know that he, yeah, he has his moments, but he's not. He actually has a big heart, so ha ha, this is how he proves it, that uh, like the Grinch, his heart is actually three sizes too big. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate the love. Um, let's move along before we get too sappy on here. We just did the box. We did the poll. All right, here's our, our reviews. We're knocking out these five reviews. First up is going to be Free Guy. 
For you guys, starring Ryan Reynolds, Jody Comer, Taika Watiti, and Lil Rel Howery, amongst a few. This is about a gamer, a game, a guy who wakes up and he does not realize that he is in a video game. Uh, that is played by Ryan Reynolds. He plays Guy. His best buddy is Buddy, played by Laurel Howery. Um, he walks through life, the just a standard day, and they live in Free City. They don't know that they're in a video game. Very cool concept, right? Kind of not been done, but it's been spun out there to a degree. Either way, he, something changes. He sees this girl, and it throws him off because she's singing Mariah Carey. Great song choice. And it now, like, he's like, what the? Things are changing. And then he winds up taking one of the bad guys, um, or one of the heroes, excuse me, sunglasses, and wears them and realizes, holy cow, there's a whole different world here that I didn't even know about. We spin that forward. He finds out that he's in a video game. But, side story, we also see the gamers outside of the game, playing the game. And there's a whole other concept in here where there's a villain who stole the rights to gaming products, to the uh, the originality of the ideas who came up with the coding for all of this kind of thing that's the crux of the story can the coders get their their rights back in a lawsuit that they have but then also they want to do the right thing they don't care about the money they just want to invent this game where these video game characters evolve and they turn into an actual ai that eventually evolves this guy ryan reynolds character is kind of proving that without giving too much more away joe keery jody comer they play those outside the bot, or the actual real life people who are in the game thing and the Taiki Waititi, he plays your villain here. Guys, I like this movie a lot. This movie was fun. Uh it shifts not into neutral in the middle, but it's kind of just like, all right, we gotta lay the groundwork. We gotta give you that backstory a little bit. We have to give you that base of why we're in this world. What were we doing here? And then what are we gonna do going forward? How is Act Three then going to wrap up? Why do we need to keep paying attention to Act Three? I will tell you this, it opens very strong. It's a lot of fun. Action y cgi heavy stuff but like in a fun way they influx ryan reynolds character and lil rel and all the into this world a lot of fun there's a lot of fun you're having with it where as they walk through the world all sorts of fun things explosions and and different you know car chases and what have it. that's all happening and it's a lot of fun motorcycles guns bing you love it all that kind of fun summer blockbustery stuff act three takes it to a new level now you're invested into the characters you want to see what happens and we still have the action stuff there is a cameo at the end that is phenomenal i like almost cheered out loud in my chair i was like ah oh, that is phenomenal the way that they put that cameo in there it is um a lot of fun i won't i, I won't go anything spoiler away here if i was a gamer i bet i would love this movie and reasons for that they do talk gaming a little bit in here where i was like uh, i'm just gonna go with it not too much, though, where I was ever lost. And I and that's a credit to these filmmakers and a credit to what they do. But there's some gaming things in here about writing code, about being a gamer that I bet other gamers would love. Prime example, they get actual Twitch Switch. Twitch Switch. Man, <laughs> you guys are going to yell at me. <laughs> uh, gamers on this, right? They're playing this game and they get like their videos or people are watching their YouTube as they're playing this game on there. And there's real life, like super famous shit. What are they called? Twitch users. <laughs> Darn it. Again, not a gamer. I'm not anti-gaming. It's just not my thing. So I bet if I was a gamer or into gaming, I would have loved this movie even more so because there's little extra nuances. The cameo at the end that I loved, I bet the gamers had that throughout this entire film. So, I had a lot of fun with it. It's a solid like three and a half to four out of five. This is your blockbustery movie. This is your summer blockbuster. Sit back, grab my popcorn, and just enjoy it. Um, try and pick out some of the voices that are in here. There are some uh, cameoed voices, if you will, that do some random characters where they just do like one line. And you're like, oh, holy crap. Wait, that was Hugh Jackman that just did that voice, right? That was Tina Fey that just did that voice, right? I'm not sure. Let me go check afterwards. And when you check afterwards, you'll confirm that it was. Um, I don't want to get too much spoilery stuff in here for you. So I will say this. I liked it. It's fun. The box office speaks to why it's fun, why it's being liked. Good for Ryan Reynolds for having an original IP and not doing a franchise, doing something brand new that actually got accepted, that actually people enjoy, that people were like, okay, I'll go out. Here's the franchise that I think people bought into. Ryan Reynolds. He's fantastic. Has there been a Ryan Reynolds product that people haven't gone into thinking, woohoo, I'm going to enjoy this, right? Most folks love this guy across the board. 
acting quality level wherever you think he's at on there. I think he's a great guy. He's also a good actor. He could do more, but he knows his lane and he stays in it perfectly here in a good way. This movie's a lot of fun. It is prime Ryan Reynolds. If you enjoy his stuff, you're going to enjoy this movie. It's a blast. Jodie Comer, great job. She plays more than one character. Joe Keery out of Stranger Things. Wasn't sure what to get out of the guy. You know, immediately you see him like, oh, Stranger Things guy, what's going to happen here? Great job. I want to see more out of this guy. Uh, a knock for me? Why, TT? Hmm. Taika is fine. It's a, it's a, you know, he made a choice as an actor, went with it, and it was fine. Not bad. I think I could have just done less of the character, maybe. Not his fault. Either way, folks, go check out this movie. It's a lot of fun. It is worth the money that it's making right now. Free guy in theaters now. On HBO now. And in theaters now. Reminiscence with Hugh Jackman. That's right. A segue from one Hugh Jackman to another. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson, Hugh Jackman. Dandy Newton, Cliff Curtis shows up a little bit later on here and a kind of a don't really recognize him, uh, Cliff Curtis role. Uh, a couple other folks, you know, Brett Cullen and Daniel Wu are in this as well. All right. We're in the future. Water has taken over the world. We live in Miami and water has uh, encapsulated all the big cities. Here's what I like. They don't tell you why the water has got everything. Ice caps melt. Maybe dams broken, I guess. We, we don't get into the politics of why. And I enjoyed that because I think we could have taken a left or a right going down that path. I think it's just kind of assumed as to why these things happen. There's a comment later where the folks of Miami don't work during the day. Everyone works midnights now. They sleep during the day because it's too hot. So I think that's your clue as to why everything got hot and we melted. Moving on. In this world... When, when all the water broke and everything, we've now changed the world. Wars happen, and when after the wars happen, there's a lot of poverty. A lot of people are out on the, on the luck, whatever. Hugh Jackman, Thandie Newton, they run this machine that can access your memories. And you can lay down in this machine and then go back into some memory. You choose the memory and then just relive it. Pretty cool stuff, right? that's like their job. They run this place. So people come to them. They pay them. They can, they can access their memories. It's a lot of fun. Also, though, obviously, law enforcement is going to want to get their hands on this thing because we can grab a bad guy, throw him in the machine, access his memories, and then figure out, oh, he did know X, B, and bad bad guy who was the seller and the dealer, and now we know who your informant was, X, Y, and Z, right? Um, there's a whole conversation whether that's you know morally acceptable, whatever, all that kind of stuff. But in this world, it's accepted where we can grab some of these bad guys and access their brain. There's your story. A new customer comes in, Rebecca Ferguson, uh, not Michelle Monaghan, not Rebecca Hall. If you're one of those people that gets those three actresses confused, guilty. Uh, but Rebecca Ferguson, she does a really good job. She's this mysterious woman who Hugh Jackman now falls in love with. Fast forward. Wait, he's been accessing memories this time to remember the girl. So where are we in the linear timeline of when did he actually meet Rebecca Ferguson? When did he have this relationship with Rebecca Ferguson? That's kind of where we're now at, where now we're confused. Up until this point, it's not conf a confusing movie at all. You're into it. You're like, all right, this is kind of fun. Now it's like, well, am I on uh, X? Like, am I at time X or am I at time Z further down the road? Because we've accessed memories. Now he needs to find out there's more to it. He can't find Rebecca Ferguson. She disappeared on him. That's why he's accessing the memories. He goes on this journey, finds some bad guys. She was involved with a bad crew. That's all I'm going to tell you because I don't want to give away too much of the film. Or you need to be a little bit lost too. It's one of those movies where it wants to keep you on your toes trying to figure things out. Why is he going after X, Y, and Z? I've been using a lot of letters on these reviews. Sorry about that. This movie's not bad. It's not great. I feel like... You ever watch one of those movies where you're like, it's missing something. I don't know what the something is. But if this had that something, I think I would really enjoy this. There was never a moment where I was bored. There was never a moment where I was like, Ugh, let me turn this thing off. Let me fast forward 30 seconds. Uh, I wanted to know the entire time. I never got too confused. Like they started inception -y going, well, a dream within a dream. If you're in that world, then you can feel the dream and the dream is real. But that's your actual feelings. And it does do that a wee bit. But not to a degree where you get lost, where some folks do with inception and what have you. Uh, Jackman's great. 
he plays a, an emotional role here. He kind of stays as the emotional guy, but then his emotions go in the in the negative where he gets angry bug towards the end. Fanny Newton, she plays like a gruff, rough around the edges, served in the military, um, you know, F off, work clothes type of lady. Uh, I kind of liked it. I was like, wow, this is, you know, for her, this is a little, you know, a little rough, little, you know, because she can do both. She can do the elegance. And then in this one, she kind of gets a little dirty in here. Rebecca Ferguson just plays Rebecca. You know, she's dolled up. She's a singer. She's, you know, kind of like an illusion of like this beautiful angel or whatever. And she plays that well. So the acting is fine. The movie is not bad. Do not spend money on this in the theater. Sorry. Uh, and, you know, Tony and I are big go to the theater type people. It's on HBO Max. If you have an hour and 53 minutes at home this Saturday, put this on. You won't be mad. You'll enjoy it. There's a Hugh Jackman topless scene. There you go, ladies uh, and men. It's not horrible, but it's, you know, like, I enjoyed it. Okay, what's on next? There's, there, there's your review. All right. Season recap time here, folks. I gave you a first take earlier on, way back when we got Superman and Lois out on the CW. 16 episodes got dropped. The final one was just last week. How perfect. Thank you, guys. You know how much I love Superman. You're going to give me the finale just before my birthday? <laughs> who signed that? Who who decided to do that? Um, this is arguably one of the best Superman products we've gotten in some time. In quite some time. I was hesitant. I was, what are we going to get here? I am a current Superman reader, so I know that he, his son, John, is, you know, taking over to a degree in the comics, getting his own line, and a lot of people are really buying into Superman as a dad, Clark and Lois as parents. So this obviously comes at a good time for CW, where they're going to do them as parents, them in Smallville. Um, it went places I didn't think it was going to go. It... The cinematography, first of all, let me just, on a side thing, is fantastic. There are some shots in here that are some of the best Superman shots ever, ever, seriously, on CW. And I'm like, wow, are you serious right now? Some of the the graphics with him, like fire explosions behind him, uh, you know, muscles, hair, whatever, all the Superman-y things. It's like, oh, my God, that, that was a phenomenal shot. I can't believe I just got to watch that. And, and sometimes on my phone, I need to uh, watch this on the, on the big screen. It takes it to a level where you're kind of like, okay, this is a story that has been untold. You're making up some things here. You're going to add in some things, you know, John Henry from a different dimension type stuff, which is cool. Uh, the dad, Lois's dad, very involved with the military, but then also knows about every uh, Superman. No, you know, he married his daughter, so he knows who he is. So he's keeping the secret, stuff like that. Guys, I really liked it. I really liked it. And it grew and grew and grew on me as the season went on, where to the point where I was just like, wow, this is one of my favorite Superman things that I've ever watched. And you guys know I'm a very harsh Superman critic. I, I you know, it, it took me about two rewatches to really jump on board to what they were doing with Man of Steel. Once I accepted it, now I see it for what it is and absolutely love it. But that's a totally different entity. This was, hey guys, we're taking the Superman and Lois that you know, and we're just going to like further the story. We're not going to make up new stuff. We're just going to push it down the road. Where nobody's really done that yet nobody's said let's just keep going let's go with them as parents what's the next step everyone just kind of stops with superman and lois meeting stops when they just start dating and this was well, what would be next and they did a fantastic job i am very much looking forward to season two if you are on the fence at all guys i'm going to push you over and say watch this you're going to enjoy it if you can knock it out quick and binge it up before season two comes out it's good a knock on it, I will say for me, was the cliffhanger at the end. Like, it's it set up for, like, a really big, huge cliffhanger going forward for season two. And I was kind of like, oh, all right. I get it. It's a, it's a side storyline that's like, okay, we'll watch that. CW right now, you can catch all those episodes. Catch up on Superman and Lois. Up next, Schmigadoon. This is some Apple Core respondents for you guys. Uh, Schmigadoon wrapped up also a couple of weeks ago, actually, but I saved it for today just so we could fill some time slots here for you. Schmigadoon uh, starring Keegan-Michael Key, Fred Armisen, uh, Alan Cumming, Cecilia Strong, Dove Cameron, and more. I don't know. This seemed like it was like an SNL sketch that it could have just been like an extended Key and Peele sketch that makes fun of slash parodies musicals. I love musicals. Big fan. Huge Broadway fan. Dying for it to come back so I can get back out to seeing some shows. Um, it was funny. It, it, it parodied Oklahoma probably the most out of any musical. Uh, quick six episodes. 
it does dive into some characters into relationships and love and who wants to you know uh give more to their partner like like being a partner to somebody else and then it also touches on old-timey mindsets of we're anti-gay and we're anti-children out of wedlock like things that happened like back in the 40s and 50s that everyone would (gasps) gasp about i.e when like musicals like oklahoma came out so it like makes fun of all of that but that puts it into like a real show that we should be buying into i don't know eh I, str- I didn't struggle through any of it because they're only 24-minute episodes. And you can knock out all six ups quite easily. Some of the song and dances are good. Some of the songs are catchy. Nothing where I would go running out there. So if you have a little bit of time, if you have any interest in any of these performances, I would, oh, on the performances, everyone's great. All performances across board. A couple child actors in here. Great job. Uh, Dove Cameron gets underused because I know she's very good at singing and dancing too. Uh, Fred Armisen barely gets used in this. Uh, Alan Cumming doesn't get used the guy's fantastic either way i I really feel like this could have been like a like a 90 minute special on you know uh nbc where they just do a silly song and dance thing one sunday night type thing either way it's there it's out there schmigadoon if you have interest don't let me talk you out of it but if you don't have interest move along one more thing I want to give you guys is a first take, and that is on Mr. Corman. This is Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He's dropped this also onto Apple Core Respondents here. This is also on Apple TV. Ten episodes, currently about four of them are out, written, directed, and starring JGL himself. Joseph Gordon-Levitt been a fan of his for a long time, ever since his Angel in the Outfield days. <laughs> That's not true. I would say... Um, uh, 500 Days of Summer, 50 First Dates. I really became a big fan of this guy. Uh, so he does a lot of things with independent artists. Uh, he has that hit record Joe thing that he does where uh, independent artists can submit their work and get their work out there and heard and musically, uh, you know, acting, singing, all, all sorts of kind of stuff, which is really great. This series, it's booked as a music teacher who has given up on being a musician now looks for a new life we haven't got to the music teacher part yet i'm three apps in we haven't got to him playing songs yet we've gotten to his head's messed up and he's angry at the world because of other people the way he was raised deborah winger plays his mom she does a great job so far in three apps um he treats people differently because he's always looking at people to be angry be like him all right i'm curious how this is going to turn around we also, in episode three, started introducing like some trippy dream sequency type things. Curious where that's going to go. Curious how much more of that we're going to get. I don't not like it so far, but I'm curious, like, let's get going here. I want to see the music. I, I, I signed up for the music teacher that's like teaching music and he wants to still be a musician. I want to see the music teacher then become a, mus- a musician. But if that, because that's how it was sold to me. If that's not what we're going to do, then I'm curious what we're going to do. I'm in on it. It's okay. If anybody has started watching it, let me know on the side and we can commiserate together here as to what exactly is going on. All right. That's going to wrap up, Mr. Corman. Uh, I think episode 260, this show will wrap up. I'll stick with it. We'll give a full season one recap of Mr. Corman on Apple TV right now. For the moment on Take Two Podcast, what we're going to do is take a break and we shall be right back after this break. All right, guys, here it is. Here is your interview with Mr. Dwyer Brown. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, definitely when you're done, uh, let me know. I would love to hear from you guys on the socials, your thoughts on the interview, your thoughts on Mr. Dwyer Brown. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brown, if you're listening right now for jumping on Take Two Podcasts. We'd love to have you back. And if you feel the Dreams fans, I think you're really going to enjoy this. If you want to see the full unedited version with myself and Mr. Brown, it is over on our Take Two Podcast YouTube page. Go subscribe and watch that today. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, there's a charity that uh, Mr. Brown is involved in. It is awesome. It involves kids who have lost a parent and it helps them to play sports as young kids who have lost a mother, father, or both. And that is a fantastic charity. Here, right now, my interview with Mr. Dwyer Brown. All right. hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Apologies for unprofessionalism there because I fanboyed out hardcore. But let's get right into our casting couch, shall we? The Bras. I'm a big fan of Rachel Brosnahan. She's been added to Dead for a Dollar. This is the Western that we've already announced that William Defoe, Christoph Waltz is in, 
we have now added Rachel Brosnahan into a Western. Yeehaw, that could be fun. The Lakers movie, HBO Max, right? HBO is doing this? Ooh, don't quote me on that one. I'm 90% sure. Uh, Bo Burnham was supposed to play Larry Bird. <laughs> He's out. We replaced him with Sean Patrick Small. Not totally familiar with his work, recognize the face when I saw it, but uh, he will now be playing your Larry Bird in that series, which is coming soon. Uh, the NBC comedy, Things About Pam, this is Renee Zellweger's comedy that she's doing on NBC, uh, has added Josh Duhamel. Not too shabby. So maybe that spinoff Mandalor Mandalorian series involving his character might not be happening as soon as we had hoped. Uh, let's see. Grey's Anatomy season 18 has added, uh, ooh, Gallagher. Ooh, Sean Gallagher? Pat, what's the heck's that guy's name? I'm going to have to come back to you guys on that one. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hold on. Let me look that up. I want to make sure I get it right for you guys because um, he's a fantastic actor and I can't think if it's Sean or Patrick. Um, either way, we will come back around to that. Big Sky Season 2 has cast, they're, they're rounding out their cast and Jamie Lynn Siegler is going to be your lead into this one. Now the same detectives from Season 1 um, are going are gonna to be returning we tried to watch this. Tony and I couldn't stick stick around with this one. Peter Gallagher. That's the name. Peter Gallagher is the name that I was going for. He's going to be on Gray Season. That's that's fun podcasting for you guys right there. That's what happens when you don't have a co-host. This is why I can't do these shows solo. I miss you, Tony, so much. Come back, Tony. Um, all right, Peter Gallagher. Great. Season 18, recurring character. Uh, it's the Big Sky, Season 2. Jamie Lynn Siegler is going to be uh, part of it. They just added seven actors, but she's your big name. She, of course, met a soprano. Lots of love for the Sopranos. She would be on that. Ma'am, that show was hard to watch. But apparently it did well enough that they booked the season two. I'm now I'm curious because you're using the same detectives to return for another case. That That's intriguing to me. I don't know if that's intriguing to anybody else. But now it kind of makes me want to watch it. So does Jamie Lynn Sigler. Either way. The Menu movie that's going to be coming out. Uh, we've already announced Anya Taylor-Joy. Ralph Fiennes, they're going to be in this. They have added John Leguizamo. And as soon as I saw Leguizamo, I was like, you know what? He's an Emmy and a Tony winner. We, we need to get this guy closer to the E. He's halfway there for the old E got a Rue. I didn't realize Leguizamo was halfway there. The Connors season four. Did not realize that show was still on the air. Going to a season four. Good for them that they are. Has added a recurring character of Mr. Jason Alexander big fan of his work underrated actor folks if you don't realize this about uh, jason alexander he did a lot of broadway and theater growing up and i know everyone in the world knows him as george from seinfeld do yourselves a favor and look up some of his broadway stuff the man can sing really well and dance i just want to hype jason alexander randomly for some reason emily the criminal is a kind of uh, satire type film uh that has just cast aubrey plaza that right there should tell you the type of comedy that we're going for but she is a down on her luck lady that gets into a uh, credit card scamming scenario where she decides she doesn't hate it and like kind of sticks with being a criminal. Hmm. Sounds a little bit like the Annie Murphy series that I just talked about, but this one's more, I think, the comedy route. That is going to do it for your casting couch. Up next, we have a little What's in the Glass. You YouTubers are going to get a treat here as you're watching our What's in the Glass because you're going to get to see the actual glass. Look at that. Smoke Wagon. A new bourbon that I got to try out here. This is from Las Vegas. This is your bourbon whiskey. Uh, brood, uh, brood, cripes. Someone yell at me there. Distilled out there in Vegas from the Nevada H&C Distilling Company. This is your small batch that I got to try over the weekend. I'm doing a horrible job holding up for the camera. You audio listeners got to be like, dude, shut up about the video. We're not watching. We're listening. You're a podcast. 50% uh, alcohol and 100 proof. This is pretty good stuff. There you go, audio folks. Hope you guys heard that. Uh, tried it over the weekend. Never heard of Smoke Wagon before. New to me, but gave it a whirl. It's good. It's real good. Has like a smoothness with a little, right at the end there, just a little kick right at the right at the uh, back end. And uh, I enjoy it. So I will be purchasing the Smoke Wagon Small Batch Bourbon Whiskey once again. Thank you to the good folks at Smoke Wagon. Uh, your stuff is good. I can't lie. I'm going to take a little quick swig here uh, while I take a swig. Our show is going to take a break, and then we'll be right back for the third act of the show. Ah. Well, you YouTubers are like, wow, we just watched him take a sip of bourbon. That's fun. Here's a fun thing. 
who wants to take a sip of bourbon with me? We guys, uh, we have our first birthday is coming up soon and we're planning a party. We want to have a party. Our first, did I just hear our first birthday? Wow. That bourbon works. Our fifth birthday. We've been on the air for five years. <laughs> Five years we've been on the air. We're going to have some type of a party. Tony and I are working up a, a myriad of ideas of what we want to do. But uh, but I want to hear from you guys. What is a fun party that you guys think us as a podcast should do? Hit us up on all of our socials. At Take Two Podcast for Twitter. You can also uh, 434-602-1931. Give us a quick phone call. Leave a voicemail or text. Hey guys, I think it would be fun if you went to Top Golf, If you rented out a baseball stadium watched a movie together i don't know silly things like that wouldn't mind hearing from you but at that point we can all get together gather around the campfire and maybe share a bourbon i think that would be fun meeting some of you fans might be a blast a good way to celebrate our five years of podcasting together let's rock into the hollywood news field of dreams is the topic i'm not gonna let this die um because they're talking about a tv show for field of dreams hmm Hmm. That's my thoughts on it. Uh, I don't want to water it down, man. You have you have something that's gold by itself. Where else are you going to go with the storyline? Are we going to follow the ghosts into the corn? Or are we going to follow other baseball players? Are there other characters that can see the ghosts that we didn't know about? Uh, I don't know. Are you going to the same characters we can't, you know, the Kinsellas, what else is there to talk about, right? The daughter gets older and she sees ghosts. Does Costner die? And You know what I mean? A lot of questions arise from a one and done product that was fine as a one and done. So what are we going to do with this TV series if this occurs? Uh, I got to talk to Dwyer Brown about that. If you listen to the interview and didn't fast forward through it, or you go watch the entire thing on YouTube, you'll hear his thoughts too. He leans a little bit my way, but a little more positively. Okay. Jeopardy in Jeopardy. Uh, Richard, see you. He's out. Bye-bye. He made some comments back in the day. We found the comments and now they're gone. So he's out. He fired himself, right? Because he's an executive producer and all that. So he had himself go out. Now here's everybody's shtick. Everybody wanted LeVar Burton from the first place. Is that true? It's not true. We thought that. We want that. We want LeVar Burton. It seems like gold right there. Silver platter. Here you go. Here's a great host. He did a good job. But you know what? Nobody knows he did a good job because apparently Burton had the lowest ratings of any of these guest hosts. Even Joe Buck was higher. Seriously, folks. Joe Buck, Jeopardy, got higher ratings than LeVar Burton. That's disgusting to me. No disrespect, Joe Buck. I think you do good football, not great baseball. Either way, now everyone's pushing for LeVar Burton. Let's make it happen. I'm still on board with Burton. I don't care what the ratings said for that first week that he was there. You have it right there, folks. Make it happen. I know he wants to do it. He keeps tweeting out fun stuff saying that he wants to do it. I'm all in. Let's do it. Okay. Denis Villeneuve has made some fun comments. He has Dune coming out soon. First, before we get to his comments, he is not putting out any screeners for Dune. Why? Normally, folks, if a movie does not let the press see it ahead of time, that's a bad sign. This movie, though, has been pushed and championed so hard as an award seasoning dominator, not contender. Don't, like they think they have pure gold that it's curious why he wouldn't send out the screeners. That wouldn't be the reasoning that it's going to be bad, right? So I think, and I think his comments adhere to, he doesn't want to send out these screeners because he literally does not want anyone to see this movie unless it's on the big screen. That is where he wants this film viewed. He even made comments, and I'll quote, First of all, the enemy of cinema is the pandemic. That's the thing. We understood the cinema industry is under tremendous pressure right now that I get. But the way it's happened, he's not happy with all of this. Frankly, to watch Dune on television, the best way I can compare it is to drive a speedboat in a bathtub. For me, that's ridiculous. A movie that has been made as a tribute to the big screen experience needs to be viewed on the big screen. Speedboat in a bathtub, you say? So he definitely hardcore wants the thing watched on the screen. I want to watch it on the screen. Everyone should want to watch this on the screen. It's the same thing that Nolan would try to do with Tenet just last year. This is what he wants to do with his movie. I get it. I understand it. But at some point, you got to face facts. This is what all these filmmakers are trying to go back and forth with. He is just, his, his flag is planted. 
this movie needs to be watched on the big screen. Let's hope that let's hope that happens. Other things that we're hoping happen is Finn. Did anybody like the character of Finn in Star Wars? I did. Eh, I feel he got misused. I think, you know, in Force Awakens, he was great, great introduction to him. And then The Last Jedi, that movie wasn't great, so then they didn't know what to do with him. And then Rise of the Skywalker, it was like he was just there. Then they really didn't know what to do with the guy, and they misused Rose and what have you. But they might try and make it up to him by giving him his own spin-off live-action series. Thumbs up for me. Let's do it. Because that character has a lot of potential. There's a whole backstory to that guy that we didn't even touch. Like, what what can we get out of this character? And then going forward, does is he a Jedi? Does he or does he have powers? Can he be a Jedi? Was he in love with Rose? Was he in love with Ray? There's a lot there that we could get out of the Finn character. I think John Boyega is a great actor. Let's do it. Make that series. Yellowstone. I just binged and caught up on all three seasons of Yellowstone. Well, season four coming out. November 7th. So anybody else that wants to catch up on some old Kevin Costner, November 7th, uh, season four of Yellowstone comes out. And lastly, nope, not lastly. I lied. Lastly, on this little section here, Josh Jackson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He is in talks. Charlie is coming back. Season two, Mighty Ducks Game Changers. He's in talks to be there. So the one part, when you know, we had the episode where the original Ducks came. He didn't have Charlie. It was cool, but they even had to make a comment of, yeah, he's not here because he doesn't like you, Bombay. You know, like, make a thing of it. So they'll make a thing of it when he finally does show up in season two. It just would have been cool if he was there the first time. Are we getting him on the next one? Rock and roll. Let's bring in a couple other people. Keenan Thompson, one. let's bring him back too. Let's bring in a, a few of the other original ducks that we didn't get. All right, last thing in the news. Awards dates have been put out there. You know that we are a big award season-y type guys. Here we go. No, or, uh, September 19th, the Emmy Awards show. September 26th are the Tony Awards. Then we're going to go all the way to January. January 31st, the Grammys come out. February 8th, SAG Awards. March 5th, the Spirit Awards. March 13th, the BAFTA Awards. And then finally, March 27th will be the Oscars. So there you go, guys. There's your main uh, award season stuff. All of your award season has been announced. All the dates going forward, they're all out there. Uh, you know what? I'll share the link on our Twitter at the very least, so that you can follow some of the other ones, like your MTV Musics or whatever. They're all they've all been announced where they're going. But to me, those are your big award season ones: your Spirit, your BAFTA, your SAGs, and then of course Oscar, Emmy, Tonys. So there you go. All right, done with the Hollywood news. Now on to our DC discussion. I'll be honest, folks, talking a little too fast. You know, the little swig, which usually slows down the talking. Uh oh. Man, that's good. That's good bourbon. All right, DC discussion. Jason Momoa has put the word out there that he's like, he wants this Aquaman 2 to happen so bad. He said, WB, just give me a call. I'll direct it. I know what I want to do with the character. I know where the character should go. I'll do it. I'll direct it. Um, If Momoa were to direct a film starring Momoa, being a very Momoa film, how much Momoa would we get in that movie? Like, it would just be like, shirt, nope, no shirt. Water, splash behind me. Shirt, nope, no shirt. I, I'm curious where his mind would take the character uh, going forward. But, hey, if it works, there's an audience for Aquaman. There's a large audience that loved that movie. I liked that movie. I think Tony's lower than I am on that movie. So we're, as a show, we're kind of like, all right, fine. I'm intrigued, though, where it goes forward in the DCEU and et cetera, regardless. Uh, I was not the only one to have a birthday recently. Ben Affleck's birthday is a few days before mine. He is a few years older than I am. But because Affleck was in the news with the birthday and what have you, the Batfleck hashtag came back. We want this to get done. We're not going to beat a dead horse here, but I do want to know from you Take-Two Podcast listeners, where are you guys at on this? Do you guys want Bat Fleck? I know we give our opinions where we're at. It would be cool to bring him into the Flash movie. We'd love to see. We're going to get, you know, multiples of these Batman. Let's get Affleck on there. We already know that he's filming on set. Do you want that Bat Fleck movie? Does that continue things going forward? Personally, I think if we get another Bat Fleck movie, that'll help us nudge towards getting the Man of Steel 2 and getting Cavill back. That's a tough sell right now. Cavill's so busy, I don't know if we're going to get him. That's another rambling for another day. But either way, that's hot and heavy. Hit us up on socials. Let, uh, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts. Do you want to see more Batfleck? Yay or nay? Like in his own solo film. A solo film we are going to get, I'm looking forward to, is Black Canary. Journey Smollett has been cast. She uh, has booked that she is returning to her own solo film for Black Canary. This is good. This is in the Birds of Prey verse. 
and we're and probably the Gotham City Sirens first. Now we can put that back on the table. If DC wants to do these offshoot characters, start doing these offshoot characters. Black Canary is a great character. Does this also now give us Green Arrow? Woohoo! Bring that character in. Who would you book as Green Arrow? Because he should be involved in somehow. I would love to see it. I would love to see them expanding that more. I would love to see Batgirl jump into that universe and then Batgirl become Oracle. That's a whole storyline that is fantastic that we should read. Get us away from the Trinity. If you don't want to do Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and, and that Trinity and touch that DCEU stuff, perfect. I'm all about it. I think Journey Smoe is a phenomenal actress. So she will knock this out of the park. Okay. Marvel Minute Time. Oscar, Oscar Isaac was asked... Uh, comparing his Moon Knight, which we're getting soon, uh, to Apocalypse for X-Men, and he politely said that Moon Knight uh, destroys Apocalypse as a character. Water is also wet. I mean, breaking news. Um, I think we mentioned this, but I just want to throw this out there. Ben Kingsley's character will be in Shang-Chi. I think we already mentioned that in the past, but I just want to put it back. We, we just confirmed that in Shang-Chi, Ben Kingsley will be back, so we'll get that character again. A new character we're going to see is Ironheart. This has been speculated, but now we know that Ironheart character will make an appearance in Black Panther Part 2, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That's cool. Again, talking about those offshoot characters. Here we go. Not only an offshoot, but we're now furthering the Iron Man character, getting away from RDJ. That's totally fine if that's the, where we're going with the MCU. I'm all about it. Oh, uh, where am I? Uh, okay, Owen Wilson was asked about the MCU. That was a segue that I just goofed up. He said he hasn't watched what now granted Owen Wilson was just in Loki did a great job. We plan on seeing him again in season two of Loki and maybe even more. He said he hasn't actually watched a lot of MCU, but he really did like the Aquaman movie. Ouch, Owen. Very ouch. Made a little boo-boo there. I mean, to each their own. At least he admits, I don't watch a lot of it. I was hired as an actor to be in this. That's fine. Does it break our hearts as fanboys that the characters playing these or the actors playing these characters aren't as into it as we are? Yeah, it does. But then at the same time, you have to understand that's, you know, that's these are actors. This is their job. All right. Another actor that has booked another job, Captain America, part four. I didn't put this in casting because I wanted to save this for Marvel. Anthony Mackie, done deal. He's coming back. We already knew this was going to happen. This was a heavy rumor. It was obvious if you watched Falcon and Winter Soldier that this is what was going to happen next. Um, but now here it is. He's getting a movie. I think it's interesting that they said it's called Captain America 4 because we never got a Captain America 3. Sorry, Civil War felt like an Avengers movie to me. Cap, uh, Chris Evans got screwed. Either way, he's coming back for that Captain America 4. He gets his solo film. I'm in. I saw some hate for this. Like, blah, who cares? I care. I'm, I'm all about it. And plus, again, just like Ironheart, just like Shang-Chi, we're going forward. If you're going to stay invested, well, these are the characters we have to stay invested in. I just punched the microphone. Folks, if you don't think bourbon works, anywho, trailers. We did do a trailer talk segment today because I didn't have a lot. And that's, honestly, it's more Tony's deal. You guys already know that. But the Eternals trailer came out. When the first Eternals trailer came out, I think people were like, well, where were these guys during Thanos, huh? Where were these guys during X, Y, and Z? You know, if they could, if they had these powers to help and save everyone. Why didn't they show up? We sure could have used them. Well, this trailer, I think people heard that and they're like, oh, let's tell them why. Let's give them their answers. Because to me, that's what this trailer said. They gave you a couple of answers of why they didn't interfere with Thanos, of why they didn't interfere in other instances where they could have been useful. And I guess that should suffice and help people out. We're going to get a little bit more, obviously, in the film as to that reasoning. But then... They did show us, like, some of the powers. I mean, you, pretty much MCU has its Superman. What's his name? Kit Harrington, Right? Kit Harington? Yeah. Looks like Superman in this, but just with yellow eye beams coming out, like, that level of powers. Um, I'm in. I'm in on Eternals. Like, my excitement level is medium, you know, medium well. You know, medium, if you will. Uh, I do want to see what we're doing here, but I also want that question answered. I want to answer. I want to find out where they were, but now where are we going? Because if these guys are awake and able to help, it's it's your Superman, it's your Captain Marvel uh, conundrum, right? If these are all powerful beings, how do they? How is there ever a bad guy ever alive, right? So where are they going to go going forward? This is why I want to watch Eternals. That does drop. So that final trailer got dropped. We shared it on our socials. You can watch it. The other trailer that came out, oops. I actually don't want to even talk about this because by the time you guys listen, you're probably going to have 
the Spider-Man uh, trailer. It leaked. Some uh, video effects guy leaked it off of his iPhone, put it onto TikTok. Some people saw it. It got scrubbed fast. I didn't even get to see it, but apparently it's there. I'll be honest, folks. I don't need a trailer. I don't need a, tra a, a, a Spider-Man 3 trailer right now. Just give me the movie. That's it. But I think Tony's on to something here. This movie might not be coming out. That's why we haven't got a trailer yet. I say those words knowing full well. You're not going to listen to me talking until tomorrow, which means tonight, CinemaCon out in Vegas, big, huge event. They might have dropped the trailer. So if they've already dropped the trailer when you're listening to me say these words, just I'm an idiot for other reasons, too. But for now, sorry, skip ahead. If not, I sound like a genius. Either way, I'm ready for the Spider-Man movie regardless. No matter when it drops, bring it on. That's it for the Marvel Minute. Here we go. It's time to go forward. I'm not familiar with the ABC series Superstar that takes a look at pop culture uh, influences. Apparently, they did a Whitney Houston, they did a Kobe Bryant, and Robin Williams is booked. But this week, coming out on the 25th at 10 p.m. on ABC, is a special all about John Ritter. Very interesting. Died early. Three's Company. Uh, Eight Simple Rules about dating my daughter. I, you know, I was a big John Ritter fan. Really liked the Three's Company. Uh, show I just recently watched Three's Company. It was on a, a, in the background and threw an episode on. My God, would that show not get made today? Just, just you know, the innuendos and, and the comments that are get made. I mean, the whole concept of the show where he has to pretend to be gay to be allowed to live with two women. That's not even a thing anymore, right? Um, I briefly lived with two women. I uh, had two female roommates for a, a little while. Fun fact. Nobody batted an eye. Either way. Uh, this is coming out 10 p.m. on the 25th, and then the very next day, the 26th, it would be on Hulu. I'm intrigued on this. I kind of want to watch it. I missed the Whitney and the Kobe. I really want to watch the Whitney one, and I definitely want to watch the Robin Williams when it does come out in theaters. You're really only getting Candyman. Candyman's kind of your only, your big release. I know the movie Together is also coming out limited in certain areas as James McAvoy, but Candyman, that second trailer I think was better. Then the first, it kind of pushed us a little to, okay, this could be good. There is a zero, yes, we're going to go with zero percent chance that I ever watch this movie. So, if you're lucky, Tony will watch it. We'll have a review on 255 of Candyman. Hopefully he does. Uh, season 12 starts off of Archer, if you are a fan of Archer. I can't believe that's on season 12. Wowzers. Season 2 of C. A little more Jason Momoa for you. That's your Apple comes out this weekend again uh apple again no man of god this is a film with ted bundy dealing with elijah wood plays ted bundy i can't i can't remember but i do know that it comes out this weekend i do remember it's elijah wood ted bundy comes out on apple that's out this weekend there's also a netflix documentary involving bob ross but like nate like drama i kind of want to see that I kind of want to see like like some uh, some mobster drama involving Bob Ross. That sounds pretty wild. That comes out this weekend, also on Netflix. He's all that. Matt Lillard, Rachel Lee Cook are in the spin, the switched around uh, adaptation of She's All That, but now it's He's All That. That movie comes out on Netflix. I might have to watch it just to force you folks to listen to that review. And then also on Netflix, Title Town High series comes out. This follows a the best high school football team in the land. Sounds very Friday Night Lightsy to me. Could be good. Could be bad. We shall see. That comes out on Netflix. Also, HBO Spike Lee has a docuseries called Epicenters New York City. It's a look at New York from 9-11 to 2021 and a half. Um, could be interesting. Curious. Love me some Spike Lee. Epicenters that drops. Uh, actually, I believe it's out now as you guys are listening. But it's a four-part miniseries, and I'm pretty sure I saw that part one was two hours by itself so you might be getting four movies about how new york city has changed and been since 9 11 that is it uh take two podcast wise excuse me you will have a poll drop this thursday that always comes out on thursdays across all of our socials you'll get that uh facebook instagram you name it feel free to vote feel free to share it feel free to retweet feel free to tell your friends to follow along so that they can vote as well and then uh, Instagram, you can comment. Facebook, you can comment. Good job last week, Facebookers. You commented great. Let's keep that thing rolling. Don't forget, on Facebook, you have the Take Two Universe page. That is a separate page that does more interactive stuff. That, like we were just talking about, where we can chit chat and talk about movies, reviews, trailers, have discussion topics, where what have you. That's on the Universe page. Just find that there. Take Two Universe group page. Ask to be added. We will say yes, I promise. And then we will have some good times over there. If you are a Patreon member, you get a new episode coming out this weekend. 
that rocks. And then if you enjoy the realm of take two, your August episode for the realm hosted by Roy, he will be dropping that this weekend. Usually that comes on Sunday. So that should be on Sunday. So check your take two podcast feed for that guys. All the birthday wishes I got this weekend were phenomenal. You guys really made me feel loved. Even the, you know, the ball busting with the, uh, which actor, bald actor do I look like? You know, guys know the, the way you tell each other nice things is by making fun of each other. So therefore, you guys made fun of me a lot. And so I know you love me. Uh, thank you very much for all the birthday wishes. I appreciate those from all the other podcasts out there and anyone that reached out in any capacity. That was so awesome. Uh, Tony. I need you to come back quickly, please, because obviously this show is going to destroy our ratings. I am so sorry. Or if you guys never want to hear from Tony. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Tony will be back. Episode 255. We're going to have a good time. Thank you guys for listening to Take Two Podcast. Once again, ratings and reviews. Woohoo! They sure do help us out. We sure do love them. Please hook us up at any time for episode 254. Have a great night, everybody.